Divine truths frequently ask questions. Jesus, Mary and others provide answers to questions that are frequently asked by members of the media and the public. So what is the gift of parenting? So what was God's intention in allowing us to become parents? Well, I feel the true gift of parenting, there's, a, there's so many gifts to ourselves becoming a parent, more, more probably gifts to ourselves than there is to the child initially. The gift to ourselves is we, we now have another opportunity. So the, other, the first opportunity is when we grew up in our own family to learn about love. Yep. Now we're being given, as becoming a parent, we're being given the gift of another opportunity to learn about God to learn about love, to learn about truth, to learn about humility. We're being given this gift by God again, by God involving us in this procreative yeah. process. But we also have the ability as parents to give a gift to the child. Right? And God is allowing us also to express our soul by giving gifts to the child and helping the child come to understand certain things. Now, the biggest gift we can give to the child is helping the child understand itself and understand everything about its use of its will, it, the power yeah. that it has within itself. And this is a wonderful gift as a parent that we can give our child. So, so God's giving us gifts through the process of our becoming a parent, and we have the ability to choose to give a gift to our, and many gifts to our child the same kind of gifts that God has given to us through the process, if we choose to be humble and yeah. if we choose to come to understand God's laws. Of course, we also, through our choices, have the ability to harm our child. And this is, in a way, a gift as well. Because as the child becomes harmed, if we are not willing to examine the fact that we are the cause of its harm, then when will we ever change? If we can't yeah. change for the sake of our child's pain, when are we ever going to change? So this is another gift. And the, this gift of being shown that if I'm the creator of somebody I love's pain, then, that, then I must have a lot of unloving emotions within myself that's creating their pain. Yeah. And this is something that we've come to terms with. So there's all these gifts. There's these gifts coming from God to us. Then there's these gifts that we can have going from us to the child. And then there's the third set of gifts, and that is the gifts the child gives us through this process of parenting. Yep. Now, the child has been attracted to us, and its personality and nature is a specific personality and nature that will help us become more loving if we engage the process and this relationship with our child in humility. This is the gift our child gives to us, even though the child mm. is unaware. The child gives us this gift through this process of our becoming to understand ourselves better. In other words, our coming to understand the use of our own free will. So we're not only mm -hmm. helping the child to understand its use of its will, but the child, through its personality and nature, is helping us to come to understand how we can better examine and, and engage our own free will in harmony with love. So there's gifts flying around everywhere. There's, <laughs> there's gifts from God to us, there's gifts from us to the child, and then there's gifts from the child to ourselves. Yeah, and it's so easy to skip over yeah. all of that, yeah. if not most of it. There's also another set of gifts, if I can give, say that, to, about the child. The child has a unique and has been designed with a unique personality and nature. There is no other person in this universe that has the same personality and nature as your child. Just like there is no other person in this universe that has the same personality and nature as yourself. Every time you give the gift to the child of allowing it to discover and use its own individuality and use its own free will, the child is then giving the gift of itself to the world. The world will become a better place through the child being present in it. Yep. Does that make sense? Yeah. So now, in the process of all these gifts that have been given, God gets to expose another part of God's personality and nature through the personality and nature of the child, if the child is not suppressed in its will, if the child is allowed its free will to develop and, and develops this free will in harmony with love, the child will come to express itself in such a way that is unique, that is driven completely by its own personality in the world. 
And as a result, everyone in the world will get to recognise a quality of God that nobody would have recognised before that child arrived. Yeah. And so you're giving, you're giving the gift of the child to the world. As a, and that's a powerful gift as well. And then every, like even after the child passes in the spirit world, every new dimension will receive the gift of the, that child's nature. So unfortunately, if the child's in a terrible condition, it'll just be the hells that receive the gift of that child's nature. Yeah. But if the child is in an improved condition of love, then it'll be the second sphere that will receive that child's gift of its nature, the third sphere and so forth. And as you progress through the dimensions, every time that child now progresses to that, those different dimensions, which they can do while on earth, they will, through this process, actually give the gift of their personality and nature to the dimension in which they exist. And that means that anybody who meets them will receive the gift of their personality and nature. But if we suppress the child, then we're not, giving, we're not allowing the child to give the gift of itself to the world. Yeah. We're not allowing the child to... We're not even allowing ourselves to receive the gift of the child's personality and nature in our own family. And as a result, we will heavily suppress the child and it might take many years before the child is able to give the gift of itself to the world as a result. Yeah. So one of the you know, greatest gifts a parent can give their child is for them to allow them to discover who they are. Exactly. And also not only allow them, but assist them actively in discovering who they are. So when you notice a personality or thing within the child that the child is engaging, instead of suppressing it, I don't just wait for that truck to pass, I think. Instead of suppressing its personality and nature, what we'd be doing instead is engaging its personality and nature in that regard. So if there's a boy and he wants to be, a, he starts dancing and he decides he wants to be a ballerina, <laughs> instead of shutting that all down because we want him to be a football mm. player, we would encourage him in those particular pursuits because that's part of his nature coming out. Yeah. Right? We, we wouldn't dictate his nature by our own desires or experience anymore we will notice the particular things that the child wishes to engage and we ourselves will actually actively encourage them to engage that, th that particular thing given the resources and time and other things that we have at our, at our availability. Yep. So if you imagine that kind of a world, none of us would grow up with a fear of making a mistake. A lot of us would have engaged a lot of abilities and natural desires that we have, you know, uh, for music, for the arts, for all sorts of areas of scientific endeavour and so forth, we would have already engaged it by the time we're seven years of age. We, we, we wouldn't have been restricted by our parents in the engagement of those particular yeah. things. And that's giving, that's help, the parent helping the child give the gift of itself to the world and helping the child, through the gift of the parent, helping the child in honouring its free will, he, the parent is helping the child understand itself. And so we're giving the gift to the child of complete autonomy of discovery, of self-discovery. That's a very powerful gift, if you can mm. imagine. If you imagine that all of us had been given that gift, many of us, by the time we're 15, would have been very, very successful people in life um, because of all of these gifts that we've been given. Unfortunately, it hasn't worked out that way because parents and society has very strong restrictions that they place that are out of harmony with love upon the child. And as a result of that, we bear the consequence of that in that we don't ever get to see what the child could have been until much, mm. much later, until the child works through all of those issues. We never get to see what the child could have been. We only get to see what we forced them to be. Yep. And that's, that's very different to what the child could have been. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so nice. there's gifts everywhere. Yeah, it's <laughs> nice to have this little little vision of all these kids just running around, dancing and playing. And yeah, yeah, just... and and understanding law, understanding the principles of love, not not interacting with each other violently, understanding the principles of love and truth, understanding how you know that affects their life and so forth. So it's beautiful. It's a beautiful image, but it's only possible if the parent has more humility if the parent actually sees its own impositions upon the child and its own belief yep. systems and the impact that it's having on the child. This is the gift we give the child. If we deal with all of those 
false beliefs, if we deal with all of the unlovingness within ourselves and we don't just intellectually change but we actually feel something different when, yeah. when we've dealt with it, what happens is a child grows up in a completely free environment to learn how to express itself and it's highly likely under those circumstances that the child will choose love in every situation. Yeah. So there's very powerful gifts that, we, that everyone receives through this yeah. process of becoming a parent. Yeah. Hmm.